was first starting out as an artist, I didn't want to pursue any grants. And my logic for this is sort of cloudy for me now, but it had something to do with pride, I think, <laughs> with wanting the funding for my work to come from me. Um, as it turns out, you know, in retrospect, it's clear to me that I wasn't qualified for any of the grants that I might be pursuing at the time, so it didn't really matter. Um, but I eventually got over this weird pride thing that I had and realized that grants aren't just about the funding. They're also about a stamp of approval that a community can put on an artist to say, this artist's work is worthwhile. And that is so important for the career of an artist, as is obviously funding. So when I first started to pursue grants, I wasn't very successful at it. And today I want to talk about um, a little bit about why and maybe help you to avoid the headaches that I had early on. So for one thing, it's really important to research the former recipients of the grants that you're going after. And oftentimes organizations will publicly uh, publish a list of former recipients, um, but if not, you can always just search online the name of the grant, and then I'll take you directly to the resumes of the former recipients of the grant. And that's exactly where you want to be, because what you want to be doing is trying to find patterns in the resumes of former recipients and, and compare those patterns to your resumes to see if it's even a good idea to spend time on this grant proposal or not. So for example, if a granting body seems to be a little bit old fashioned <laughs> and seems to be only giving grants to artists with commercial gallery representation, and you're an artist like me who represents yourself, um, maybe you don't need to go after that grant. Maybe you shouldn't spend your energy that way. That's the sort of thing that you're looking for. Uh, next, you want to start local in your applications. Um, you probably have made a name for yourself locally and maybe not so much nationally. It's harder to break onto the national scene. And so you want to go after the grant uh, the grants that are available locally, not only because it's maybe a smaller applicant pool, but also because you have more visibility on the local level, so there's more likelihood that someone's going to want to reward that visibility and that work that you're doing. So start local. Um, also, use any feedback opportunities that are available. So locally in the Portland, Oregon area, there's an organization called the Regional Arts and Culture Council that if you're a first-time applicant with them, you can actually get feedback um, from them. And the people who are giving you feedback on your proposal before you even turn it in are the same people who are training the committee members who are going to decide whether or not you get the grant. So this is really useful feedback and you should definitely take advantage of opportunities like this one. Even if a grant doesn't have that kind of opportunity, once you've been rejected from it, you can always ask uh, the granting body why you were rejected. They may or may not answer, but you are within your rights to ask. Uh, and finally, I would say focus on your budget. When I was first starting out, I wasn't really understanding the importance of a budget uh, in a grant. It's not so much about the numbers, it's about proving to the granting body that you understand numbers, that you understand the value of money, and um, in that way that you won't be wasting the money that they give you. So four things. Research former recipients, start local, um, pursue any feedback opportunities available or, or make them available to yourself, uh, and focus on your budget. Happy grant writing! For more tips on getting government grants, visit the website in the description box below.